Welcome. In this series, we'll introduce you to basic mixing terms and techniques to set you on the right track for your future music production. We'll show you how we went from this to this. Check the video info for an index if you want to skip parts. Today, delay effects. What are they for and how do they work? Delay is perceived as echo, clear and distinct copies of the original sound. The simplest delay effect has two audio paths, one for the output and one for the feedback loop. The earliest delay units would split the incoming audio between the output and a tape loop with a record head and a playback head. The playback head's output was then connected to the input of the unit, playing back the recorded tape containing the input audio but with a time delay that was determined by the distance of the two tape heads and speed at which the tape was moving around the reels. This resulted in repetitions, which could be faster if you sped up the tape motor or slower if you slowed it down. A side effect of this was that while you were changing the motor speed, you would be changing the echo's pitch as well. Slowing down would pitch the echoes down. Speeding up would do the opposite. Modern delays like Fruity Delay 3 operate in a very similar way. Although thanks to being digital in nature, it is now much easier to set precise times for the actual delay time, making it easy to synchronize the echoes to BPM. Fruity Delay 3 also lets you choose whether you want the echo's pitch to change with delay time changes or not. Choosing keep pitch will leave all echoes at original pitch, regardless of how you're moving the time knob. Time knob, time knob, time knob. The input wet slider determines how much of the input audio is sent into the feedback path. For example, start with this down, then throw it up to affect only the last word or syllable of a vocal. Vocal, 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 vocal. Offset is a Haas effect for the feedback path. We discussed Haas effects in the stereo field video. This makes the echoes from a mono input sound stereo. 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 This will turn into a panning knob if the delay model is set to ping pong, a delay that will swap left and right channels for every single echo. 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 The mono mode will sum the feedback path to mono before putting it out, and off is self-explanatory. The delay will be turned off. The modulation section has an LFO that changes the delay time. And with that, the pitch of the sound. And the filter cutoff. Filter cut 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 Set its rate here. Diffusion will introduce slight smearing variations to the echoes, making them sound more like reverb. After all, reverb is just a bunch of closely spaced echoes all arriving at random times. How intense those are is controlled with a level knob. Level knob, level knob, level knob, level knob. How much they vary on the left and right channels depends on the spread knob setting. Setting, 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 setting. Let's look at the feedback path now. The most important control here is the feedback level. Note as I turn it up, the ring around it turns red. This is to indicate that I'm now feeding the signal back louder than it was received in the input, making the echoes increase in level with every repetition. Another feature modern delays often have is some form of filtering and saturation inside the feedback path to separate the echoes from the direct input audio. In Fruity Delay 3's feedback path, you can choose a low, band or high pass filter, sample rate reduction and bit crushing and limiting or saturation to affect the feedback signal path. This means the signal will pass through these effects once every repetition, making their changes more pronounced each, each time. time. On the output we have wet and dry, but also a tone control. This is a subtle filter for the wet signal that can separate it even more from the dry signal or subdue the wet signal so it isn't too obvious in the mix. Echo is a great way to add a sense of space without muddying your mix. That is, an echo will make the listener feel like the voice exists in a room without the density of sound a reverb creates. Think of delay as a reverb light. 
So let's make a slapback delay for the Vox here. A slapback delay is a single echo with a very short delay time. Let's send the Vox to a free track and open Fruity Delay 3. I'll turn the dry and feedback level all the way down so we're only getting a delayed signal and only one repetition. After that, let's fine tune the delay parameters so it's obvious. I'm also going to use Fruity Blood Overdrive to saturate the slapback. That thickened it up nicely. Vibrato is mainly used to articulate longer notes in lead sounds for variation. This can help make a note stand out in a mix as the pitch is constantly changing. Like a hand wave from a crowd, it's great for drawing attention to sustained notes in a mix. If we set a Fruity Delay 3 to be a slapback delay, but then turn the dry off and the delay time to as short as it can go, we can make an artificial vibrato effect using the modulation section. Useful for lo-fi wow and flutter effects as well. Let's add a simple quarter note echo to the single note guitar here. I'm not making a send track for this as it's not necessary if I don't need the extra control over the echoes. I'm happy with what I can get in the direct signal path. A dub delay, made famous by reggae music played through big sound systems, is like a reverb throw, which we'll discuss in the next video, but using a delay plugin. It grabs your attention by drastically changing the focus of the mix to a sound that's normally in the rhythm section or a one off. We'll automate the wet level up when we want to show off our echoes. The characteristic sound is achieved through rather high feedback levels and the prominent use of effects in the feedback loop, like this. Finally, let's make a traditional delay send for the tonal bus in our example something that will convey a little bit of space that does not overpower the mix. I'll send all my instruments to a free mixer track, add delay 3, turn down the dry, and set it to give me 8th notes. After that, I'll add a reverb 2 and an EQ to further diffuse the sound. <laughs> Nice. Usually, you'd see a results section here. However, this video is split from a video that was initially about delays and reverbs, and we felt that it may be a little too much information for one video. Because of that, the result of the next video will include the techniques I've applied from this video. Be sure to check out the video information for any manual or video links and the example projects used in this video. 